All right, so, you know, really proud about how the game ended. Again, you've heard it, you know, that's a top 25 opponent. Um, we all have injuries and um, things happen, so I know they didn't play without, they played without their quarterback, but they still got a really, a lot of good players in order to, you know, win the Cotton Bowl and be a top 25 team and, um, you know, go there and play. And to end the game 30 to, on a 30 to three run, I thought it was 27, it's 30 to three, I think. Um, says a lot about our players. We started slow, obviously. Um, maybe our players took them for granted, whatever it was. I w do worry sometimes once you go out to warm-ups and see the star quarterback's not playing, sometimes you have a letdown because you think things are going to be easy. So maybe some of that happened. Um, but very proud of how they finished. Defensively played awesome in the second half. Um, outscored them, I think. Went seven to three, so um, and <clears throat> made some significant special teams plays. So was very concerned in game about our inability on third down to convert, our inability to run the ball um, was very unusual um, in our four years of being here. So they did a great job. They played really hard and played extremely hard, and we did not adjust very well and match their intensity. On, in my opinion. Um, up front, so, but we got out of there with a win, and now we got to get ready to come back home, and you know, we restarted the home streak. We had a one that was pretty long here for a while, one of the longest in the country, and screwed that up, so now this year we restarted one, so it's good to be back home, and hopefully our crowd will um, come out and give us a home field advantage. <clears throat> On that, I thought that our crowd was phenomenal there, um, to show up for a road game like that and to stay, um, you know, at the end of the game in the fourth quarter, you know, looked like <clears throat> late in the fourth quarter, like the whole stands was Ole Miss. So that was cool to see. And like we challenge our players with things. I mean, I know the Grove's awesome, they say, but it'd be nice if our fans would stay like that to the end of our home games too. So it was cool to see. It was really um, energetic, kind of reminded me of uh, the Egg Bowl two years ago at Mississippi State. At the end of the game. Questions? Kind of an off topic question here, but Ole Miss fans have kind of expressed some kind of concern about Matt Corral uh, and his whereabouts. I was wondering if you've had any contact with him over the weekend at all. Yeah, I don't think that's really um, my spot to comment on, um, you know, especially public like that. So I appreciate the concern, but it's really not my spot. Lane, correct me if I'm wrong, but were you and Brent Key together at one point at Alabama? When you were there, and if so, what was he like? You know, as a coach, and just you know, what do you know about him? That's one of your questions where you know the answer, and you knew we were together, but then you say, "Were you?" Um, yes, uh, he did a really good job. I've actually tried to hire him before at one point. Um, really good line coach, <clears throat> really good teacher, um, good recruiter. And um, he's doing a good job there. Lena, are you concerned at all with where the run game is right now? Yeah, I'm highly concerned. I mean, that's very unusual for us, not just here, really anywhere. I mean, it's been a long, I don't even remember. I mean, this job, Alabama, I don't remember the inability to run the ball um, at all. So. Like I said, they did a great job, but obviously that has a lot to do with us, and that's everybody, you know. Um, that's perimeter blocking. That's lineman execution, running back um, footwork. It's everything. R you know, running the ball is not like throwing sometimes. Sometimes in throwing, I can be a good quarterback. Kyle will pretend is an athlete and a good receiver, okay? Well, I can take the snap, and he can run a quick route, and let's not block anybody, and we can move the ball. Running's not like that. It takes everybody um, to have a really good running game. So um, <clears throat> we definitely look to improve there, and uh, that, that's a that's a major issue and, and one that I don't think anybody would have guessed. Lane, Saturday, Jackson said he felt last year's team would not have made that comeback or won that game against Tulane. Did you kind of sense or feel that after the game, and it, it, is that a testament to the, kind of the proof of concept of where this team is two weeks in? Yeah, you probably got that from me. I said that in the locker room. Um, 
you know, I did, obviously don't have analytics to prove that, but I did feel a difference. <clears throat> you know, that that may have not have happened a year ago. Um, and I just really felt during the game, you know, like the offense was struggling and the defense's attitude, like after the one turnover, you know, or after a third down stop, was like, all right, we got you. You know, it was a very, we got your back. <clears throat> we really challenged them before the game. You know, we tried to match what the other team supposedly does really well. And everybody said how hard Mercer played, you know. And so we told them, let's play harder. And then <clears throat> with these guys, the whole thing was Tulane, Tulane does a great job playing as a team. Unselfish, you know, really plays well as a team in order, you know, to beat USC. And remember that team at this time a year ago, I think went into Kansas State and won. So <clears throat> the year before went into Oklahoma and took them to the last play. So <clears throat> I thought it was cool that they did play as a team, come together um, in the second half. And like I said, going on 30 to three runs. So I don't, I certainly don't know that that would have happened a year ago. Aiden Wade had a big performance. What was it like to see him step up after Trey Harris went down? Uh, it was huge because we were not moving the ball really well. Um, there was a feeling, you know, when <clears throat> he when Trey went out, something changed. You know, I wouldn't have thought that big of a whole offensive drop off, but for whatever reason, basically, we'd scored every time in every possession all year he was in. I think we punted one time the week before, but he was already out of the game at that point. So all of a sudden, then we can't move the ball. So uh, there was a feeling of that. <clears throat> D-Wade did a good job stepping up. Um, now we need other guys to do that too. Kind of following up on that, obviously several pass catchers at this point have had injury problems. What's your level of concern, I guess, with, with that at this point? Yeah, I think that game got challenging um, <clears throat> when you think about your playing with without, you know, a tight end that had, you know, come into the season through training camp and stuff, arguably one of your most important players on your entire team, how well he was playing in all areas, including the run game, help with the run game. And then Trey, who'd had, what, five touchdowns through a game and one drive, goes out. <clears throat> so that – um. You know, that, that's – guys got to step up. Coach, how important was Isaac Ugu's performance and what type of depth does he provide moving forward? Yeah, that's a very late <clears throat> addition. Um, and he's done a really good job. And that's, you know, our challenge to our guys nowadays is sometimes when you go places in the portal world, it's not the exact thing you wanted it to be. You know, every one of these guys isn't going to start and play every play you know, and be the featured player. So I, I continue to try to spotlight these guys to the rest of the team that, you know, they just seize their opportunity, whether that's 10 plays or 70 plays. Back to kind of the concern of the run game. When looking at the film, what issues did you see maybe the O-line having, especially in that first half with just trying to get anything going? Um, they did a lot of movement up front. We didn't handle it very well, um, created negative plays and, um, you know, didn't finish things. You know, they came off of blocks and made plays or we didn't turn back when we should have. And, um, you know, they were very aggressive in what they did defensively after that first series. Uh, you mind me saying I thought you were crazy when you tried to kick that 56-yarder and made it. I mean, position of the, the – you were one touchdown ahead, right? Yep. You kicked that. What made you get that feeling? There's that question, you know, the answer to thing again. <laughs> um, <clears throat> that was, you know, he had the range, and actually we took the win at halftime. We took the win for the fourth quarter. So in case we had a late field goal, we'd have the win. And there was a very big difference in warm-ups. He actually um, was kicking the ball and making it further than that, that direction. So um, when it came up, you know, it was – it was a chance to basically end the game, you know, most likely, you know, unless they go score and onside kick. Like, you know, you got a chance to kind of end the game there. And he'd made those. So, yes, they could get the ball right there. But you can go for it on fourth down and get stopped too. You actually, analytics are you should not punt no matter what right there. Um, <clears throat> because, no, because you, you have a likelihood of a 
touchback and a whatever it would have been 19, 17 yard net punt. So when you have a chance to end the game, you either kick the field goal to go two scores or you go for it. So had he not had that range, we actually would have gone for it and not punted either. Punting would be what would not make a whole lot of sense, even though traditionally over years as fans and media, that's what you would probably expect to do there. We've mentioned the struggles with the run game. Do you feel like teams are keying on the run more this year, which is opening up the pass in a way that maybe it didn't last year? Yeah, I think for sure that happens. Anytime you <clears throat> have, you know, a uh, running back that has 1,700 yards and leads the SC in touchdowns, you know, people are going to off-season scheme to stop you in the run game. And I think in the first game we threw for more yards than any team in the history of the school. So, uh, yeah, there's another side of it, too. And, <clears throat> you know, we believe in running the ball here um, from a philosophy standpoint because <clears throat> – I actually think a lot of people would, in that game, you're struggling so much, and we do have success throwing, would not run near as much as we did. And just say it's one of those games where they're loading the box and we're going to throw the ball 60 times. Um, but so that's just not what we believe in doing. Coach, follow up to Chuck a little bit. Just talk specifically about Caden Davis and what he brings to this program. Yeah, and the touchbacks are huge and your coverage units and setting the tempo or placement. We placed the kick deep right, um, which is hard to do for a kicker, um, where we get, I think got him at the 10-yard line, where um, he made a huge play, Tennyson, to pin him deep there. So, you know, that, that's been – he's done a great job. Kind of going off of that again a little bit, Jackson Dart joked after the game just about silent blessings because of the false start that happened before that field goal was hit. Was there any dialogue with whoever false started in that play that, hey, you know, it may have worked out this time, but just don't do it again? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we don't overlook things just because you win. That was a big part of the meeting this morning. You know, guys, you can't overlook because you win things. Because when you lose, then they get magnified. And then you say, you know, hey, the tight end's supposed to be be on the ball over there. And because he's moving late, you know, we get a penalty. Um, and let's say you make that sneak, but it gets called back and you miss the kick and lose the game. So, uh, yes, we, we, we magnify those things. And it's, um, I believe, something you have to do or else – it's very overlooked when you're winning games. Uh, you, you said a couple questions ago that, you know, you could have maybe thrown the ball 60 times, but you didn't because that's not what you believe. Why is that the case? What do you believe that made you continue to run the ball and value that so highly? I just kind of, whether it's right or wrong, I look at things in the big picture, you know, of a whole season also. Um, and I think once you go that route to submitting to, okay, hey, we're going to throw when you load the box no matter what, um, you can get off balance. Your quarterback takes more hits. Um, you may have more yards, but um, your RPOs don't work as well. So, um, you know, and it keeps more balance in your room, you know, of players and where the ball goes too because – be very challenging for a running back come back 1700 yards and only have four carries or something in the game. Well, I'm going to guess that you have so many new people, this won't be something you have to address, but is it something you have to think about that you guys dominated this opponent the way you did last year and then you have such a big game coming up next week that this is a bit of a sandwich emotionally? I don't think so. I think that normally, like you said, would be a major issue, but half these guys weren't here. I mean, look at our starting defense. So. Um, <clears throat> I think nowadays the year before doesn't mean hardly anything, and especially in this case. What's your first impressions of Tech? Um, I think the quarterback's playing well. Um, I think they do run a, a good offense that presents some challenges. And, um, you know, they're, they look better on defense. So uh, they look like they're playing better than they were a year ago. Coach, talk about DeAndre Prince. Two huge plays down the end zone where they could have scored a touchdown and tightened things up and then an interception return. Yeah, I thought Prince <clears throat> played really well. Um, had some injuries just a week and a half, two weeks ago, um, leading into the first game. So it wasn't really at full strength, and I thought he made some really good plays and it was really good timing to see. 
Yeah, I mean, going on the Georgia Tech theme, just what's it going to take to have a similar result to last year, this game? Well, well I mean, we got to win the game. So to think of a similar result to whatever, 50 nothing, whatever it was, um, is, is I have high expectations. That's a little unrealistic. So we got to go win the game. These guys are playing good. Uh, we have a lot of stuff to work on and a lot of challenges. And like I said, I hope we have a really cool environment. You know that the fans um, come out. I really commend the student section. Our last home game, I think they said that's the highest number of students we've had at a game, including like Alabama a year ago. So, especially the freshman class. So uh, that's really cool. Hopefully, the rest of our fans can show up too. All right, guys. Thanks.